another Facebook British soy boy who led us to the same old corruption, but this time he seemed to have been the weak link that has revealed yet another astounding, amazing rat line of corruption that I bet no one even knew existed until Michael McKibben and his researchers just pulled this up for us. So, Michael, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Thank you. Oh, it not it great for a couple old men to just, you know, even be above the ground? That's what we always used to say. Any day above <laughs> the ground is a good day. So what yeah. we have here is this, again, I'm sorry to have to call him a soy boy. He might not drink soy milk, but the point is, is he looks like, you know, B grade, C grade, D grade. And he doesn't seem to be very intelligent. And he seemed to have let out the secret of secrets. And that's at the Oxford Internet Institute is the key, perhaps, to the way that they were going to charge all of us a carbon tax. So, Michael, can you tell us what you've discovered? Yeah, we did that interview the other day, and we started talking about how this Oxford Internet Institute came onto the radar screen. And as, as our researchers started digging into the people involved with that organization, all roads led, led back to uh, France. And that was a surprise. Never expected that. And now, as we've dug further into the company holdings of this company that uh, popped out called Sopra Steria, and their subsidiaries, about 150 or so subsidiaries, wholly owned mostly, we started seeing the same old rat lines where they're um, one ha owns the other, and the other owns some of the others, and they own others, and it's it's all buried inside their corporate holdings. And so uh, a couple of concerning things uh, I want to mention here, because I think what we need is help, uh, because this company is, 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 has got tentacles all over the planet. And there are two, sp at least two companies or companies, set, sets of company holdings that are, are quite concerning. One is called Axway, and this is a company that was actually started by Sopra, Sopro. And they, we just discovered le literally within the last hour that they have had 81 GSA contracts uh, involving uh, software services let me read you the agencies that they have been involved in. The Department of Defense, Department of Interior, Department of Health and Human Services, the National Transportation Safety Board, the GSA, the Treasury Department, Department of Commerce, Department of Transportation. And that's just one of their subsidiaries. And so we're unpacking those contracts right now. And... That's one company, and that deals with information technology. But there's a whole other twist to their holdings uh, in a company with various names called OSI Group. And uh, this is a very difficult set of companies to track down and, and, and decide who's related to whom. But right now it appears that this OSI Group, which this French company is associated with, uh, is headquartered in Illinois, and they are one of the. They must be one of the largest privately held companies on the planet, and they're heavily involved with supplying uh, food service, food production, food processing, all over the world. And you pretty much can't pick. They they don't even define locations by individual locations they define them by regions of the world europe asia north america and what why why i find it concerning is because as as we learn more and more about all this uh, food poisoning that's going on with gmos and um, and the like it appears that this company could be equipped to implement any kind of plan desired to uh, disturb the, the, the food production in our world by instructions to this company, which 
Normally, you would see this company as a pri- uh, public company, but in this case, they're all private. That's very strange. And why? Yeah, and is it's it all it's diversity? all running back to Macron and this carbon credits company, Sopro Stereo. Now, normally, when we find a tentacle, and it leads to a nasty-headed octopus with many other tentacles, it usually leads back to the British. Privy Council, but in this case, or to the SES here, the shadow government, or just some of the normal rat lines, but in this case, Dame Shirley, the person who actually started that company, Oxford Internet, what's the last part of it? International? Oxford Internet Institute. Institute, excuse me. I'd hate to get it improperly stated. I know, it's it's hard to, it's hard, it doesn't flow. No, that's not a good one. She missed out on that. The O-I-I, it's like you're stuttering. But anyway. Yeah, it it looks funny on paper. It looks like oi. Yeah. Oh, oi vey. Uh, I bought into this company. So anyway. Right. Dame Shirley. At least we got a Brit in on this, and it was from Oxford. And we don't really know a whole lot about Dame Shirley so far. But then somehow Dame Shirley let this astounding ability to basically control the mechanism for taxing for carbon footprints and literally that goes down into individual offices what type of business it is or your own personal home what your tax is going to be based upon perhaps your square footage or how many people live in the house or how many cars you drive and you are going to be taxed and in France Macron and his Rothschild wife made sure they started the first step of the program, which was to start charging extra for fuel. And so he charged 30 cents more on what was already $7 a gallon. And it put the French people into the street. Well, this is the beginning. This is the tip of the iceberg, folks. If you thought the Paris Climate Accords were good, then you didn't look closely because it was going to cost America $5 trillion. And that money was going to be given at first mostly to China and to Russia and to our enemies because they're the ones who needed the help to bring their industry into less of a carbon footprint. And so we've well, discussed let me tell this you, before. Let me tell you about one of the contracts. I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? Oh, don't worry about that. Were you talking? (laughs) Don't worry. I'm always talking. That's why I say, don't worry about that. I can talk again Uh, later. Well, let me. uh, it it goes to your point about the carbon tax plan. Now, this is not something that, uh, I've got to be frank, that I've spent a lot of time studying, like you and Betsy have. But um, there's one of their holdings is is a very prominent company called Cassiopeia. It's C-A-S-S-I-O-P-A-E, USA, Inc. And there's these Cassiopeias all over the planet, various subsidiaries. And uh, we discovered that uh, this company had a GSA contract in America from up until 2017 for $4.9 million to provide the IT and telecom strategy and architecture for the Department of Housing and Urban Development. And I think you probably called that correctly, that what they were setting up was a way to put some sort of carbon tax on all the properties in the U.S. Oh, yes. I mean, and they've been been doing it up until, interestingly, they completed this contract right right as uh, President Trump was uh, taking power. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? When you describe it, because I'm only hearing some of these things now, I've read what you've sent us so far, but it sounds like Circo. I mean, yes. so many diverse services that we never, ever needed to farm out to a foreign corporation right. or country. That's absurd. And then the sensitive information that you would have to give for the carbon tax analysis would basically be your dark profile that Eric Schmidt has collected on. Yeah, well, uh, on our side of the water, that's clearly the SES making that decision. So I think now we're starting to see these groups that we've been studying all coming together, and we're seeing their grand plan. They pick up the phone in London, they call Paris, they call Washington, 
they uh, arrange the contracts that they need. Then they get the services people in there to provide it. They probably don't give enough information to the people actually implementing the contract, or they give them false information as to what they're doing. And so by the time the contract's done, they've got their next mechanism of this global credits plan put in place. Okay, an image is arising in my small brain. Here's the image. Circo manages more of our data management in America than any other company. They manage our airplanes, our our boats, our trains, our planes, our cars, our parking meters. They manage everything, 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 everything. Now they're being sued. And the United Kingdom or Britain is suing them for their very bad services in New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and Britain. It's an $86 billion lawsuit, which they intend to lose. And the reason they intend to lose is because they did a long study on this company, Serco, and they found that at best, they deliver about 65% of what their contract says they will deliver. In other words, they're one of the worst companies ever, and yet they have more contracts than you can shake a stick at, which you and your researchers have demonstrated ad infinitum. It stinks that Serco's going down and Supro Stereo Stereo is coming up. This is a new type of hysteria. This is a this is ridiculous that you're finding out every moment and and then letting us know the new depth of the tentacles and the way they penetrate into America. We didn't know it was America. We thought at first it was mostly just France, and we figured oh Brexit. We couldn't let Brexit handle the mechanism and the corporation that charges the carbon tax, which is to be the new world currency, by the way. No, because they're Brexiters. We need to have someone in the European Union where George Soros and Angela Merkel's, Angela Merkel's Fourth Reich, Nazi, German, fascist Fourth Reich, which has taken over Europe, you know, what they had already bought into. I had no idea that a French company, but it made sense because the I other day, no Macron, and they're about a $4 billion company, a $4 billion company. And the other day, mm -hmm. Macron, along with Angela Merkel, decided that they're going to have their own standing army in Europe, which is, of course, against all uh, sensibilities. Basically, that's why I'm making fun calling it the Fourth Reich, because was the Third Reich not enough? And how many times did they have to promise not to militarize and now they're going to have their own military because they don't like the fact that Trump told them they have to pay up and pay their bill and buy their own weapons and do their own, have their own people fly those planes and so on and so forth. She doesn't like that. That isn't the way it was supposed to work. The invasion of Europe was her, inv her invitation was the invasion of Europe was not supposed to work out that way. So. For France to have it, yes, because France and Germany are now one being because in between Angela Merkel stands Mr. Macron's Rothschild wife. And I think you nailed it on the head when uh, you said, oh, they needed an ar they'll, they will need an army to enforce the carbon tax. Yeah. Can you imagine uh, being asked to make that first payment and write that check out of your uh, bank account? I think people are... <laughs> <laughs> going to get quite angry during the biggest up winter. Until now, up until now, it's been it's been theoretical discussion, hypothetical discussion. People pitching it, politicians. You know, we all sort of turn turn it off after a while. But as soon as you they actually ask for the cash, look what happened in France. I mean, you know, the, there's so many good, godly people in in Europe, and, and to see them going through this really pains me because I lived over there for six years. We traveled all over Europe, booked concerts all over Europe, uh, stayed in homes everywhere, and people were so gracious to us in Germany, in France, in Spain, and you name it, almost every every country in, in Europe, certainly Western Europe. And to see them suffering like this is, is just uh, uh, unbelievable. Well, these are bright people. They know what's going on. And yet, somehow, this European Union has been slowly tightening a noose around 
everyone's neck for what? Well, it used to be called National Socialism. Now they don't allow nations to exist, and they don't want you saying nationalism, so now we have to call it what it is. Populist Socialism. And so the new fascism is a populism that is part of what Angela Merkel and Macron represent. But it's also what Hillary Clinton was representing here in America. It's simple globalism when it comes down to it. It's selling out to the plan of the Rothschilds to have all banks come underneath one purview of the United Nations, the World Bank. These kind of dreams of centralization are what dictators, insane psychopaths dream. One of them just died recently. H.W. was a psychopath. If you follow his life with a truth meter, you will notice that the things he did cost many, many, many lives, and he did not care. So these are the kind of people we're dealing with. So I think what's happening in France is beautiful, and it needs to happen all over Europe where they've been invaded, and they have already voted to send back the migrants because it didn't work out. And that's, we could call it the Soros-Merkel invasion. And what's going to happen then? I believe George Soros told them that for a mere $84 billion a year, he would screen all of them in their own countries and only allow those who would really do asylum to come into Europe. In other words, a tax. So carbon tax goes in place, but so does the George Soros tax on the invasion. We could call it the invasion tax. So yes, this new world currency was supposed to be based upon the nonsense of how much carbon you were using. And it's absolute nonsense. You've said it before yeah. many times. They, they, uh, they, they, and they're tying it to the data system. And, and we all use our credit cards every day. And, and uh, we don't think twice if the money's there, we can use it. But think how easily it's going to, once they get to the point, where they can tie that database for this carbon credits uh, system to your ability to use your credit card, then it, you will see this down to every transaction. As soon as that's, you swipe your card, it's going to go out to the database. That database is then hooked to this carbon credit system. If you have stubbornly refused to pay, it then sends back a no. We're not going to give you your money. That's how close we are to a total tyranny right now and these they've been putting this software system in place clearly from looking at this company for years they've been laying it laying down the the rails for this company or for this system and it appears to be in place now and it must be in place in france and that's why macron moved forward but it may be in place here from what i'm seeing because of all these contracts that have been laid down for all these years with this French company. We're not even talking about contracting American companies. They're using this French company. And getting into America through Serco tentacle-like yeah. corporate takeover. It's disturbing right. that the closer we look, we can see that even when a Serco goes down, something else pops up so quickly that it's, right. it's ready to you know grab that rat line, that flow of money, make sure they... Well, that's what I was describing earlier. They've got these 140 different subsidiaries, and as we're looking at the actual records of these subsidiaries, within those subsidiaries, they have holdings of some of the other subsidiaries, so it, 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 it's like whack-a-mole. You can't, you can't kill it. it, it it's going to raise its head, and they've already got the legal claims to all the licenses in all their embedded subsidiaries so you won't be able to get to the bottom of these companies not well, easily well we will be charged a carbon tax whether we like it or not yes according to what we can see your uh, profile what i like to call the cube that you're going to be put in your digital cube by eric schmidt they've collected all that data by what they call breaches which aren't breaches or by hacks well you can't hack and take massive breaches to the extent that they've described these, they aren't. They give up this data so that they can have an absolute profile in America of you as right. a consumer. And if you do not do what they think you should be doing, it'll be just like China, except here in America, they will charge you with tax. And just as you said, they'll go into your bank account and they'll take it. 
but by in the way, China, Douglas, you use the term consumer. You as a consumer, that would imply that it's just talking about buying and selling. But the social credit portion of this is much deeper. This gets into your thoughts. Oh, absolutely. So it's not only the consumer portion, it's your thinking life and how they assess you as a thinking person and your political opinions and your your um, uh, relationships and all that goes into this mix, not only your buying and selling. And that, Ab- that's what's concerning. Absolutely. Little Richie Allen, he testified the other day, representing Facebook, that they don't sell any data that they take from you on Facebook. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, I heard that. Anyone can go on and push the button and get your data. It's four dollars and thirty two cents last time I checked. When I heard that I said, This guy's an idiot. He doesn't even know what he's saying. But he was the one who allowed the weak link in the chain for you to then discover and your researchers to discover this new group so pro steria. Steria. I wish that I could make more fun of that so it makes sense. So pro steria, I don't know what that means, but I can tell you one thing. It is a mechanism of globalism to charge you a tax that is based upon fallacious information created by Al Gore and the rest of the insane climate control people. Because as they're charging you your tax, we're having some of the biggest winters that we've had in the last few years because the monitor cycles of the sun control the ocean currents, which control the temperature of the ocean, which controls all weather. The sun controls our weather. It has very little to do with what we produce on the earth. And so the hysteria that is created is simply the proof that subliminal programming is incredibly effective for those with low IQs. Yeah, and they've been pushing this through our universities for a decade or more. And and I think most people form these opinions on climate change or uh, whatever. There's another term. Climate change in... uh, What's the other term? That you well, it used to be climate warming. We were supposed to be on fire. Right, yeah, global now. warming. Yeah, the, the people just now just have an emotional reaction. Well, I'm supposed to be for uh, this the system because I'm for helping the earth, as if those that are against it are not for helping the earth. And that's the that's the the, the uh, fascinating mind control system that has been put into place, and how simple it can be. You just keep pounding people with that same message and sooner or later they don't even know why they react the way they do they just do those statistics that were used for the fake global warming which then they changed because the global isn't warming right. and changed the climate uh, control or climate change and now they're blaming everything on that and yet it doesn't make any sense what are you talking about is it getting warmer or is it getting colder because the scientists say we're entering a new mini ice age it's going to be some of the coldest winters for the next few winters that we've seen in a long time. Why? Because the sun doesn't have any sunspots. There's no solar flares. It's directly related. Hello, anyone should know this that studies weather. But Wait, what Douglas, you're, you're, you're making a big mistake right now. Mm. Am I being sensible? <laughs> yeah, you're using logic. Oh. You need to be listening to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I just heard her today talk about the carbon tax and how that was going to solve all the world's inequality problems. Here's what happened. That woman is a definition of an idiot. She is the new Democratic Party called the Socialist Party. And she is a perfect example because what she's just showing us is what's really going on up there because she's an idiot. And I like to call her Alexandria O'Crazio because she's completely (laughs) crazy. Here's the new thing. She is demanding, before she even gets placed in the Congress, to have high-level committee positions. Why is she demanding that? Because she immediately found out that, as I've always told you, anyone with a high-level committee position gets an offshore account and you get paid for your opinion and your vote. It has nothing to do with your constituency. And so she found that out. Because anybody should have known that before they went there, but she just found it out when she got there. And then she's probably finding out a little bit about lobbyists, right? And soon she's going to find out about the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and the way that if she doesn't align with the party regulars, she's not getting any money. And so she is going to be a perfect example 
of watching someone implode in a corrupt system that the rat lines are so defined that the senior executive service shadow government does not let any decisions be made that aren't along the same bureaucratic status quo nonsense that go to the same Circo British companies. And now you're pointing out Supro Styria is the new one that is getting all these contracts. We don't even know they exist, OSI. These are the biggest companies no one knows about that are, that are ripping off America. And they were getting right. ready to take that $5 trillion worth of Climate Accord money and basically redistribute the wealth of America to our very enemies. And if you look at the plan, that our money the first year was going to go to China. <laughs> so we bring the tariffs down. And oh, wait, we, how does that work? So we put all this money into this fake system called carbon credits, and then somebody, then what? What? How does it go to China? Be, they take the cleanest and richest country, and they basically tax them, and then they send it to the dirtiest, supposedly poorest company, country that can't handle putting scrubbers on on their uh, chimneys and and getting rid of uh, unclean coal and uh, uh, getting rid of the pollution. You're never going to change China. You could give them $5 trillion. They're not going to change their industry practices, which are the worst in the world. Not one iota. And guess what? There is no enforcement mechanism for the Paris Climate Accord. Therefore, all it was was a tax. There wasn't even right. anyone who was going to do anything about anything. And by the way, changing carbon right now when you're going into a, a, a what's called a, a strong monitor cycle, 280 years, and you're going to see very strong, literally, uh, a mini ice age come, it's going to be the opposite. The carbon is going to do the exact opposite of what they think. But if they looked at the ocean currents, they'd see this. And if they looked at simply the ice accumulated in the Arctic, you would see that for a while it did get very depleted and we could get through the Northwest, pa Northwest Passage without ice pack. And now you can't get anywhere near it. We have more ice now in the right. Arctic than we've seen in so long, and the Antarctic is bigger than ever. So when hey, you see Al Gore now, oh, Al Gore just did a new movie because he's so embarrassed that he did a new movie, and he's got the Ocrazios out there, and they're screaming for blood. It's like if you do not believe in now what they would call um, climate change, then I'm going to harm you. And literally, they say other words that they, they literally, it's its the worst thing you can imagine. If you do not believe in this crazy theory, then they will, they, there's no punishment that is too bad for you. That's what they're saying. I'm not going to repeat their words because it's hate speech. So literally, hate speech against those who don't believe the fake statistics. All the statistics have been debunked. Mm -hmm. Anybody who was awake should have noticed that. And when we just put out yeah. a government document that went back to the old statistics, it got ripped up so bad in the entire world, attacked that U.S. report. Uh, I'm surprised Trump didn't do a tweet on it and laugh about it because it was stupid. It was based upon the old Rothschild statistics. And when I say Rothschild, I mean literally Rothschild family owned the companies that created those statistics and they owned all the basically the dopplers all throughout america and all even offshore america and it's been sold well, out did, to another company i but, did uh, uh, spend some time reading about the uh so the supposed increase in uh, sea temperatures and when they started digging through the data what they discovered that, that there were great swaths of the ocean that had no buoys in it, and these buoys have uh, temperature gauges in them. So wherever they uh, had the buoy, they got a temperature gauge that was probably accurate. What they were, what they decided to do in order to get the temperature grid consistent across the whole planet is they they would get ships as they were going across these um, uncharted waters for temperature they would get them to send them the temperature reading from the bilge water inside the ship. Now, think about that. You've got a ship that's got a big engine cranking away and creating heat. So it stands to reason that that ship is going to be somewhat warmer, even if it's only a few degrees, than the water around it. 
Well, if you use those readings from that bilge water, it's going to show a higher temperature reading than the actual water outside the ship. And so what they discovered is that that was the source of the increase in temperature. And once I saw that, I said, oh, my gosh, these people are just making this up for political reasons. It has nothing to do with engineering. The same company that collect that data and controlled the Doppler also control chemtrail spreading because we've been doing that since the 70s. We've been seeding clouds as well, for particularly drought areas, but particularly in the past, recent past, we've been doing it for a variety of reasons to create a basically a, a reflective cloud cover to stop that horrible heat of the sun from burning up the earth because we're all going to be on fire any minute. Al Gore said so. If Go back to Al Gore's chart. Remember Al Gore's chart? It goes long up and down, up and down, up and down, and then it goes up five times, ten times higher than it's ever been in history in a matter of a couple of years. Al Gore, you're all wrong. We had great droughts in California and water dried up like we've never seen before. And then guess what? We had the largest rains in California we've ever seen, and all those places filled up with water again. Now it's getting to be a drought again. But the point is, that was constructed. That is geoengineering. That is messing with the weather. And that's not even our own government doing it. Because climate control has been agreed upon for a long time. And if we had signed the Paris Accord, it not only would have cost us $5 trillion over the length of that agreement, but basically it would have done nothing for us. China would have done nothing to clean itself up. Russia would have done nothing to clean itself up, and it would have just been a tax. But that tax, oh my, it would have reached down to each and every American. How many cars you drive, whether you walk, what kind of business do you work in? Do you have cows in your backyard? How big's your property? You would have yet another tax upon you, and this tax is just like the blast tax. If you ask people, why do you pay taxes, they say, for infrastructure, and I'm going to tell them, no, you simply pay the debt on the U.S. Federal Reserve. That's all you pay. All the rest is written as bad notes, as basically uh, off-book accounting, and that's what people don't understand. We're acting on credit everywhere, so do you think the federal government needs to pay for anything? No, and if they do, it's paid with fiat currency. So we need a new tax. But what was the previous tax for? War debt. War debt. Okay, wars that I can't remember, I know nobody was in, I'm still paying for when I pay taxes. And that's the disturbing part. Now we'd have a yeah. carbon tax, and people would say, well, what is carbon? <laughs> I thought carbon was good. It's the basis of all organic life. Uh, what are you talking about without carbon dioxide? What about just planting some trees? What about, what about, what about, what about? doesn't matter what you say. It's not going to put the money in the hands of the right. globalists who designed the emotion. system. Yeah, your emotion has to be subliminally controlled so that you think the earth is going to end because these specific globalists, uh, which you have now named... Uh, good old Dame Shirley and her gang have already set up a system for taxing that was going to take money from people you can't even imagine. The five trillion, that was what the government was going to pay. That isn't the tax. Every human being on the earth they could have taxed, they would tax. All for the sake of doing what? Trying to save well. carbon? <laughs> You know, I, we, we keep going back to that Richard C. Walker Internet of Things patent, but that was a big aspect of uh, his patent was the accounting system for tracking everything that moved on the planet. Uh, and this technology, at first I thought this was going to be, we were going to find out that this was the SAS, which is one of the largest um, enterprise software firms in the world but now i see that it's more specialized than that they got it settled down to where this sopro steria through its intertwined conglomeration of alliances has put its literally put its tentacles out all over the planet you look at these subsidiaries 
the the um, shocking thing is that this French company has twice as many UK subsidiaries as they do even in France. Now, what does that tell you? That they were going to charge the Brits more for their carbon tax because they're mad because of Brexit. <laughs> That's what I would. Guess. Well, this was going on before Brexit, but it, it sure seems to me that that uh, a company that was counting on the Brits to start paying this tax along with the French uh, may have been spooked. That may be why we're seeing Macron acting on his own. He's wow. got to get it going. Wow. I'm just so thinking he, out loud. Yeah, he's out there virtual signaling saying Trump is trying to end the climate accord, but I know, I know that the planet is on fire because of that evil sun and climate warming. Oh, what What did you say? Oh, it's it's getting colder. Oh, I mean, I mean, climate cooling. Uh, I mean, literally, they changed it overnight. Yeah. The planet was going to burn up and now it's climate change. And they're leaning towards the fact that, oh, now we're going to go into a mini ice age. Folks, it is such a scam. And Al Gore, uh, I should call him Al Jaira, because didn't he sell his network to a bunch of uh, fascist uh, Islamic Muslims? Yes, he did. And this man wanted his piece of the pie because he didn't get elected because of hanging mm -hmm. chads and the intervention of the Supreme Court. And, oh, that's right, Kavanaugh himself. So Al Gore had to get his piece of the pie. He's got this all set up, but we can now see that the mechanisms, at least one of the biggest mechanisms is this corporation you've discovered, Dame Shirley's group out of OII, the Sopras Stevia. No, Sopras Steria. See, it sounds like Stevia, like the sweetener, so I, you I, know, know. I can't get past that. Hysteria. Sopra hysteria. Hysteria. It should be digital hysteria. Oh, oh, carbon hysteria. That's what I think Not I'll hysteria, call it. Not hysteria. Hysteria. I know, but I'm going to call it carbon oh, hysteria. Oh, hysteria. Because it's hysteria. It doesn't even it exist. As a matter of fact, we're going to, in this next cycle, need more carbon. Sorry, well, let folks. Let me ask you something. Uh, let's go back to the contract they had with HUD for four years. So let's say they've implemented this tracking system for all the properties in the U.S. What was going to be the next step? What was going to turn on this system? They charge it to you as a tax, and if you don't pay it, they foreclose on your house. It's just another way to, like MERS, just through a centralized computer system, tell you this or that, and then tell you whether or not you can own your own property. It's just another way to take away your property. Hmm. So instead of a property tax, this was going to be a carbon tax on your property as another way to um, to do whatever they wanted with your property. Because you don't have a solar panel on your house and because you don't have an uh -huh. ele electric efficient heater and because you don't have an on-demand gas heating device. You don't have a tiny house. You don't have a smart meter. You know, on, yeah, you don't have a tiny house. You, don't, you see? So they determine, as you pointed out, this isn't about... This is about lifestyle. This is about dragonfly. This is about the control. I, I was saying before, they'll put the tax on us in America. But in China, they'll kill you. And they already have. People step into a vehicle and they're never seen again. But the last thing they were doing is using WhatsApp. And oh, just before that, someone on the street walked up and took their telephone from them, played with it a bit directed them to a vehicle, and they were never seen again. This is happening right now, and I don't mean to a few people. With the Uyghur people, they've already killed 750,000. And this is what I'm going to predict, folks. And you better get ready for it, Europeans, because we love you. Nobody loves you more than Michael McKibben and I. I've been to Europe more times than I can count. I love Europe. It doesn't matter. You're invaded, and something has affected your brain, and you don't have free speech. And George Soros, Angela Merkel, Nazism has taken over Europe, and you seem to be asleep at the wheel. And so we have to say some things that are very, very harsh, because I know that you don't get a chance to say them. You don't get free speech, and that's coming here to America. And in case you don't know the group that did it, that was the Atlantic Council, who tries to create the Russian boogeyman for you day and night with George Soros' uh, donations from the Open Society. And then that would be the Digital Forensic Research Laboratory, which became the Truth Ministry 
to stop free speech in Europe. It's now come to America through Facebook, at least. We believe also probably Google. Uh, but there's also a Google system uh, called the uh, Digital News Agency, which digital news system, which he then screens all news in America. So free speech is being squelched. 500 conservative sites, big ones, big ones, millions and millions and millions of people wiped off of the Internet. No free speech yeah, anymore. That, this is why they don't want Facebook to go down, because this is their main propaganda tool right now. They don't have another one. Now, can you tell them about Richard Allen, his connection to Nicholas Clegg, and why the uh, an ex-deputy prime minister of Britain comes over to basically take over uh, international relations for Facebook, and why, at that moment, by accident, we see that they sent another member of parliament, the one I'm making fun of, the soy boy, little Richie Allen. Uh, he's got many titles, I'm sure. But Richard Allen, and he's now representing dude Zuckerberg when nations call Zuckerberg on the carpet and they're getting ready to sanction him and sue him and they send a Brit. Why have the Brits invaded Facebook? And what has your research told you about this weak link this Richard Allen, little Richie as I like to call him, his connections to Cisco and their routers and the NSA nonsense of having a router backdoor and uh, in every single router that they sent throughout all of Europe. He's the guy who coordinated that. He's the guy who right. helped steal from IBM, or not steal, to use the open source IBM Eclipse Foundation stolen IP from Leader Technologies. He was not right there. Open source. That's what they called it, open source, but... Yeah, it was our invention. Exactly, as you say, it's uh, only but, uh, open source it's, it's when they steal it from someone source. else. I'm sorry. Uh, it's interesting what you say that it's only open source according to them when it's a patent yeah. they've stolen from someone else. <laughs> yeah, just count on it being open source if they want to steal it. Then for their stuff, they they have plenty of patents for it. But uh, you ask who Richard Allen is, and we didn't know who he was. I'd never heard of him. And as it turns out, he was born in 66 in Sheffield, England, and was uh, pretty evidently sponsored through his high school years and through his time at Cambridge, and then took this odd turn right into a year at Bristol Polytechnic and then became a member of parliament uh, with a specialty in information science which is odd since he didn't have any background in that. And then uh, after his oh, seven years in Parliament, uh, immediately went to work for Cisco, where he was their director of European policy. And um, he uh, spoke all over, the, uh, all over Europe. And um, during that time, it, it's clear that Cisco was preparing for uh, these... Uh, routers that had back doors in them all over the planet so that this group of people it looks like associated with the uh, SES uh, could essentially spy on everybody on the planet and then as we now learn uh, Facebook Google um, YouTube were the database arm for this mechanism where they started creating these dark profiles. And so uh, in their good fortune, about 2 billion people on the planet did it voluntarily, uh, gave them the data voluntarily, and for the rest of us, they created what are called dark profiles. And these are essentially profiles that are created as soon as your name appears on anybody else's uh, Facebook feed or a photo or wherever they can grab your data or steal your data or get it from, quote, hacked data. Uh, they, they, as soon as your name appears, they create a dark profile on you and then build your profile as if you have a real Facebook profile or Google profile. And so it, it's taken a while to build up that system uh, for 2 billion people. So you can understand if you've got a system built for 200 there are two billion people. You don't want that to go down if that's your primary mechanism for brainwashing, for mind control, for communication of these uh, messages that uh, uh, these uh, various criminals want to put out. 
So I can see that now Richard Allen's job is to make sure Facebook doesn't go down, and then Nick Clegg, his, uh, uh, as you call a bunk buddy, another member of parliament from the same district up in Sheffield, uh, who came along right after Richard Allen, and um, because of the uh, lack of a majority in the parliament, was actually made deputy prime minister in order to get the votes from the Liberal Democrats they needed to form a coalition government under uh, David Cameron. So he was then hired by Facebook as the director of communications in the U.S., that is uh, Nick Clegg. And then he got his buddy, bunk buddy friend, Richard Allen, running European policy for Facebook. So you've got two of these uh, uh, titled Brits uh, clearly, well, no, we know we know the uh, oath that they've pledged to the Queen. They have pledged fealty to the Queen. So that should cause everyone in America concern right there because he has pledged uh, that he will follow the direction of the Queen, not the U.S., not the American Constitution. And, and uh, so we, we need to start holding these people accountable, and start using our ethics laws. We have ethics laws that should stop these people. They're not being enforced. And now we know why. The SES has infiltrated our Department of Commerce, our Department of Justice, our, our, the Federal Communication Commission, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Department of Justice, the FBI, you name it. We now can see and prove that the senior executive service is a fifth column shadow government that's unelected and these people act as if they are members of the privy council in england which where the queen protects all of her uh, uh, criminals that, that are involved in all this double dealing all over the planet and so richard allen appears to be the person they're putting in front right now to um, run cover for all of their more senior criminals uh, to try to get this, uh, keep this system moving before it completely collapses on them. And these are the lovely folks who brought us the British spying on Trump, which we have yet to get to the bottom of, because then we'd have to poke out some of the five eyes in the five eyes agreement now, wouldn't we? And yes, now, we I don't understand why we would decide not to expose these uh, these criminals that were involved in this, and why Mr. Trump would not go ahead and release their names. We need to know who these people are so we can stop this nonsense. If we keep hiding these criminals, we can never get to the bottom of these problems. Well, they've said what the reason is, and the reason is just. The just reason is sources and methods. But the problem is their sources are corrupt and their methods are corrupt. And right. So why should we be well, protecting let's get them? get rid of these sources and methods. <laughs> Precisely. And that's what he has to do. But he's one guy and he's in a ring by himself and he is fighting like the devil. A, an right. angelic devil, by the way, and taking down the evil of the entire friggin' world. And so what we are doing is trying to support him and let him know, hey, Mr. President, you're doing a great job. The climate accord, that five trillion, we're going to go ahead and let you spend your prorated amount of that each year that you're the president any way you want. So, oh, that would build your border immediately, wouldn't it? Oh, How that, about pay the Miller Act notice? Oh, pay the Miller Act notice. No, no, that is top on the list because we got to take down Silicon Valley because they're the ones doing all the listening, all the spying, all the psyops, all the getting ready for the carbon tax, all the Hillary crypto key tax, all, you know, the uh, Federal Bridge Certification Authority, all this nonsense that we pointed out, Circo contracts, uh, Crown Agent contracts, OPIC contracts, the manipulation of the USAID. He is working on all of them. So Trump, thank you. The day that you said no climate accord, I thought to myself, you know what? I bet that $5 trillion could really help our infrastructure here in America. 
and yet... Well, you know, Douglas, it, it, it sure seems to me that we could probably get rid of 80% of our federal government, and none of us on Main Street would, would even notice. Oh, there was uh, 36,000 of them in Washington, D.C. alone who walked off or weren't replaced and left. Nobody noticed. And right. so I say, take the 10,000 SES members with you. <laughs> and then we would see that the civil servants who actually deserve to be leading these agencies, who actually have merit, and who actually trained in these areas, will then lead the agencies. The problem is they bring in outside people, pay them more, rotate them around, and all they do is follow what the SES union tells them to do, Right. period. And, and, you know, people out on Main Street who do real work, they don't have time for these kind of people. And they know they're not productive. They know they only stand in the way. So if that's what these federal people are really doing, why are we authorizing funding for these federal agencies, for these huge bloated salaries, for people who j do nothing but talk to each other and pass paper to each other and obstruct doing real work? I truly think we would not notice their dis their departure. No, we wouldn't. And it's just the status quo. It's just the rat lines of evil and greed. It's nothing new. It's every single person who has the money in their hands. It, it feels a little sticky when it's in their hands sometimes, unless they have morality. And unfortunately, Washington District of Crime is the seat of complete corruption in America. And we just need to clean it out. Michael, thank you for bringing to our attention what Little Richie and what uh, Little Nikki are doing at Facebook and also for showing us the nasty footprints of the carbon footprint tax that was about to happen and showing us how that links up to what uh, Mr. Macron slash Rothschild is having to face in France. Well, right yeah, we give a shout out to the uh, Yellow Jackets in France. We're with you. We're, our prayers are with you. Storm the Bastille.